know, the Lord interrupts sometimes our schedules, and uh, he, he interrupted my schedule over the last couple of days, and I had, to, I had to make a trip to Dayton, Ohio for work. And on the way back from Dayton, I was just there for only a few hours for work, I was flying back in the airplane, and I was sitting in the seat right behind first class. And I put my foot into first class, and I took a picture of my foot, and I sent it to Beverly, and I said, my foot is flying back first class, but the rest of my body is in economy coach. And you know, when that guy came around to the guy sitting just, I could touch the back of his chair, he came there and he said, Mr. So-and-so, would you like to pick something out of this basket here? There's cookies, there's bananas, there's oranges. And you know, he didn't ask me that. And my foot was in first class. <laughs> Pastor, he did not come back to me. <laughs> that basket was right there. I could have reached my hand up and got a banana, and I wanted that banana. But you know what he did? He didn't even look at me. He looked at the other person over there. He almost tripped over my foot that was in first class. And the Lord said to me, that's because you didn't pay the price. <laughs> you didn't pay the price to ride in first class. You paid the price to ride an economy coach. And he said, guess what? This week and next week, a lot of my children are going to put their foot into church for the first time in a year. While the rest of their body and their mind is not in church. <laughs> but they got their foot in there. But they're not paying the price. I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, think about it. How'd you get here? I said, I heard about this place called Dayton. And I wanted to go. He said, who paid the price for you to get here? I said, C.B. Richard Ellis, my company did. He said, you didn't pay the price to get on this plane. I said, no, I didn't. But I had to show up at the airport, right? And I had to say, my name is Charles Jonathan Bennett, and I, somebody has paid the price for me to come get on this airplane right here. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't me, but somebody else has paid the price. And they said, yes, your name is written here. And then I had to get sanctified. I had to go take my shoes off. I had to take everything I had and lay it bare. They had, they had to go through a machine. I then had to, I, I had some clothes on, but I had to stand like this. While they, while they looked at me. And you know what they said? They said, sir, you got something in your pocket. I said, I don't have anything in my pocket. Oh, there's some coins in there. There's some money in there. They had to examine everything I had. I was sanctified. And guess what that got me? That got me into the waiting area now. I'm in the waiting area, and I got one job to do. Guess what my job is? I got to occupy, and I got to be at the gate. I got to be, I got to be at the gate, right? But guess what? My phone rang, and the phone said, the Lord delays is coming. It said the pilot was going to be late, but that's okay. There's all kinds of pretty things here to look at. Oh my goodness. There's food. There's t-shirts. There's shiny things. There's even a bar and there's some alcohol over here. Oh my goodness. And maybe I could get a little drunken while I'm waiting on the master to come. Or maybe I could get in some material things over here, right? Oh Lord, what in the world? There's so many things to do. But the Lord delays is coming. I got plenty of time. So I think I'll sit over here and have some. Oh, I was in Atlanta. Did I tell you I was in Atlanta? I had some greens. I had some cornbread. And I had some, uh, some candy yams. 
and some coleslaw, and I was getting full, and I was talking to the people around me. And next thing I know, I looked over that gate, and oh, where's all the people that were at the gate? Where's all the people that were at the gate? They're gone in the door. Don't shut the door. Don't shut the door. Paging. Last call. Last call for this, this passenger. We used to see you waiting at the gate, but you stopped showing up at church on Sunday. Last call. Where are you? Oh, well. They're closing the door. Just like in the days of Noah. The door is closed. I'm sorry. I know you had a ticket. But you said the Lord was delaying his coming. And you got drunken. You got caught up in the material things of the world. You got distracted over there looking at that magazine. They had a, they had a Sports Illustrated swimsuit magazine over there, Pastor. Right on the rack. But thank you, Jesus. I got through the door before they closed it. But Alfredo didn't. Alfredo, Carpaging, passenger Alfredo, last and final call. And then we took off the rapture. And I was thankful, Lord, that I was on the plane. I only wished that while I had been waiting, I had paid the price to get in first class. I could have paid the price while I was waiting. There was an opportunity for me to pay the price, to dig in deeper, to fast, to pray, to seek. I made it on the plane, but I didn't get all the benefits that I could have got. Sorry for taking so much time, Pastor, but God stirred me. We can't get distracted with the things of the world. Or we will miss the plane. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, fulfillment of prophecy. Because the coming of Christ uh, on Palm Sunday, we call it Palm Sunday, uh, that is and was a fulfillment of prophecy. And uh, today I want you to know that you are living in the day of multiple fulfillments of prophecy. We're living in that day. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 12. And I want you to see that Daniel said some things that will truly come to pass. And it came... And at that time shall Michael stand, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Daniel 12, verse 1. Michael is the archangel, and there shall be a time of trouble such as has never been since there was a nation. Even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And Daniel starts out speaking about really some very end time, very end time subjects, because the next verse, he says, you'll be delivered, everyone written in that book. And many of them, verse 2 says, that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, what Daniel did not see is that the people that are written in the book, and, and they're in the dust of the earth, they're going to be raised at the rapture. Because God didn't show Daniel everything. And a thousand years later, there's going to be a resurrection of those that are full of shame and contempt. After the millennium, there's going to be the resurrection of the damned. 
And in the meantime, they are without their bodies, just like the saints <coughs> that are in heaven don't have their bodies. The number one thing that people want in heaven today is their bodies. They don't have their bodies. They have spirit body. But, you know, if you take and eat an apple in heaven, first of all, it's sort of hard to chomp down with your spiritual teeth. You sort of bite through it, but nothing breaks off to go into your spirit body. And if you could slice an apple in heaven right now, if you were had died and you went to heaven without your body, you would, uh, if you could slice an apple and you try to put it in your spirit mouth, it'd fall through your body. Hello? Now some people are looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate here. But there are some that are eating in heaven today. <laughs> Jesus can eat. He's got his body. Elijah can eat. Enoch is eating today. And there may be 500 other folk They were walking around Jerusalem that had been raised from the dead. They may be there with their bodies. The thing that Jesus said before he left this planet, he said, I'm going to eat this and drink this with you. I'm going to drink this wine with you and I'm not going to drink it again until I drink it with you in the kingdom. A 2,000 year long pledge he made. A covenant he made. And he is going to enjoy a feast with us. It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And what's going to make that supper so extreme is that my mother, who loves to eat, <laughs> she knows how to become the first in line. <laughs> she knows how to stand in the Bloom Brothers store in Emporia, Virginia when I was a kid and she said, I want that wash machine. Oh, Ms. Bennett, you don't want that when it doesn't have 50 extra bells and whistles. This is a stripped-down model. I know it's only 150 bucks, Mrs. Bennett, but the one for 250 will wash your dishes and clean your house and vacuum your floors, do all sorts of neat things for you. She says, no, you advertise this model but we only have one of these in stock. She says, I'll wait till you order it in. It may be six weeks. She says, take 90 days, take 100 weeks. It doesn't matter. I want to order this one today, and I want to pay for it, and I want a receipt that I paid for it, and I'm going to be waiting for this model. And they would usually take it off the floor and give it to her. And she'd go home with it that day. And that's the kind of mother that I grew up with, bold. You want to know where I get it from? I get it from my mother, all right? And my mother is going to be boot scooting right up to the front of the line. And if there's a way to pass by the table before the serving begins, she's going to just test a few grapes and 
I just can't hardly wait on Sunday afternoon when we have my whole family, just about all my kids are at my house and we're going to have family dinner and I'll run, I'll walk through the kitchen and I'll say, you know, that, that piece of chicken right there doesn't look good. Let me get it out of your way. <laughs> and I'll eat it and I'll say, yep, that's right. It was very bad. <laughs> and then if there's something really good there, I'll tell everybody, you know, I don't think you really want to eat this. It really tastes terrible. See, if there's one thing Christians like to do, it's eat. Well, we don't have any other sins we can, I mean, any other thing we can participate in. Come on, saints. And there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. And when that marriage supper of the Lamb takes place, People are going to be eating for the first time, some of them, for thousands of years. The friends of the bridegroom are going to be there. There's going to be a wedding ceremony like has never been in the history of the world. The history of the universe. The history of eternity. It's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. And people that are in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they shall turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, look at verse 4, shut up the words and seal the book. I love it. Every time I hear somebody saying something like, uh, you wouldn't believe what happened, this happened to me, and the person would say, shut up. You ever hear people say, shut up? Are you kidding? Well, Daniel started that fad. I mean, the angel started that fad. And the angel said to Daniel, shut up the words, and seal this book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and if there's ever a day people are running to and fro, we're, we're not only running to and fro, we're running fro and to. I mean, we're, some of you, you go to the store six times a day. You go to the store to get what you think you need, and at the last minute while you're preparing supper, you look and see something missing, and in the old days, if something was missing, oh well, we'll have to make it without that ingredient. Because to hook up the horse and the buggy and go <laughs> to town to get some, You guys run to the store. You buy the big load of stuff from a store way far away. But you'll run to... Food lion right here in your backyard two or three times a day. And what you can't get at food lion, if you don't want to stand in line, you don't want to park your car and walk so far to the store, you'll get that milk from Wawa's. And we're going to and fro. But that's not all that it says. Even the time of the end, many, you seal up this book to the time of the end, Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, I prepared these notes last week. And I hear, at 9 o'clock this morning, I'm listening to John Hagee on television, and I'm hearing him say, what I have been preaching, and I couldn't believe, I'm, I haven't heard other preachers preach this. But John Hagee said, he said, from the time of earliest history, man was riding horses until a hundred, just a hundred and few years ago. The technology that we had for radio, it took a transmitter four times bigger than this pulpit. From the front of this pulpit to here and 
six feet tall to transmit with tubes. And tubes was the way to go. And technology advanced like at the speed of light. But something happened because technology was at a standstill using the tubes, the old tubes, until someone invented the transistor. And this telephone that I have in my pocket today, you know, the first radios that we came out with, they would advertise it, this is a three transistor radio. And people went, whoa. And then the, this is a five transistor radio. And they went, whoa, whoa. And then they, then they had like 25 transistors in this radio. And they went, yahoo. I mean, it just kept getting better and better. How many transistors do you think there are in this telephone? Huh? A billion. That's what I was told. I may be wrong, but there's lots of them. And the first transmitter for WHAP radio was this big and is still sitting in there, and someone's coveting it because the tubes in there are still good. And then they went to something that was much more sleek, only about two feet by two feet and about four feet tall. And that was all replaced this past few months ago. Is Ricky trying to tell me that the, the uh, thing's not on the air or what? But I'm telling you right now that a few months ago, four months or five months ago, they replaced this gigantic thing with a box two feet by two feet by two feet. And it puts out cleaner power. It does everything that the big tube one did. It does everything the other one did. It does it more efficiently. It does it more clearly. And we've come through a time that what is in your telephone would have taken a room 10 times bigger than your kitchen to duplicate what's in that little telephone that just started to ring. And if you could have shown someone 50 years ago your telephone, they would have probably burned you at the stake for being a witch. You have supernatural technology that has been allowed by God to be put into this earth. And I was blown away last night when I was flipping through the channels on channel 50 in this area. It's the Discovery Channel, and they're talking about how technology came to us. And every time there was a UFO crash, technology exploded. And I'm thinking, are you serious? 50 years ago, people heard about UFOs, but they never gave any credibility to them. And in 1989, a guy said, I work at Area S1. Over there in Nevada, it's bored out underneath this mountain. It's the most secretive place on the planet. And he said, we captured a UFO that had crashed. We're doing reverse technology on that US UFO. And he said, there is a new element that will be put on the periodic table. Now, some of you... Maybe don't know what I'm talking about, but there's iron and calcium and all these elements. We studied them in school, and that has not changed for a hundred years until this past year. 
and they put on the periodic table two new elements. And those elements that they found was the very element the guy said. He named it, he called it, and sure enough, it's now on the table. And I saw the recording where he stood up in 1989 and said, there is an element. They used this element to do anti-gravity work. And today, it is on the new publications of the school books for the kids, those two extra elements that were not there before. We're living in the day that Daniel talked about. Shut up the words and seal the book till the coming of the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then Daniel looked, verse 5, and behold, there stood another two. The one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, and who might that man be that was clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river? Who is the water walker? Hello? Hello? How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I beheld the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but did not understand. But I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He's trying to find out when the end's going to be. How many of you would like to know when the end will be? Now, Sister Phillips just today said, no man knows the day nor the hour. And that's right. Except my Father which is in heaven. That's the words of Jesus Christ. And every person that tries to tell you they know the exact day and the hour that Jesus is coming, don't follow them. They're lost. And I heard but did not understand. And, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up. I'm not telling you, and sealed till the time of the end. Many, now then he says, many shall be purified and made white. What's he saying? Daniel lived in a day that men were not purified and made white. But he's saying to Daniel, Daniel, there's coming a time that men will be made purified and white. He's not talking about the color of their skin. God have mercy. They'll be made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And look at this part here in verse 10. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. I'm talking to a politician yesterday. And he's telling me he's running on a certain ticket. And he's going to defeat this woman who's running in Petersburg that is absolutely voting too much for the other party. And how can this be? She doesn't represent our people. And so I just flung out a question, you know. Well, how can you be for that party that you're a part of and you believe in abortion? And he went on his explanation in intellectual explanation and he is convinced you know none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand and the, the people that are made white and tried they're the redeemed ones ask him four or five points I've lost all hope in 
every kind of party. Hello? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Because I don't care what party you're talking about, wicked people in high places are controlling every aspect of our lives. But the prophecies of God are sure and they're coming to pass. And watch this next verse. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate is set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Exactly three and a half years. So that tells me now the, the sacrifice was taken away from the temple in 70 A.D. That temple was Raised to the ground, R-A-Z-E-D. It was every single stone. Jesus said, every stone is going to be torn down. And it was, because when they took over Jerusalem in 70 A.D., they lit a big fire inside of the temple. Why did they do that? Because the whole thing was covered with gold plate. They burned it, but they didn't consider one thing. When gold is hot and it's flowing, it is so fine that one pound of gold can make a wire that wraps around the face of the earth. And this that they did in the middle of the temple melted the gold and the stones where the fire was at on the floor of the temple became so hot that the gold went into the cracks of the floor. The whole temple became so hot that when the gold left the ceiling, it went everywhere down into the foundations. And they literally took every single stone apart to get the gold. Jesus foretold it, and it came to pass. And then he says, but Daniel is, the angel is saying to Daniel, when the, that, that's not what he's talking about because we know that the age of that age was not finished in 1,290 days. So the sacrifice will be set up again. The temple will re be rebuilt again. And the courtyard, which is where the mosque of Omar the mosque is built, is in the courtyard, and the book of Revelation says the court has been given to the Gentiles. But the temple will still be rebuilt. Now, I don't know how it could be because everyone says if they build a temple on the top of the temple site next to the mosque, there's going to be a war like there has never been. But something's going to happen, and they're going to build that temple, and they're going to start the sacrifices again. And the Antichrist, in other scriptures it's clear, he's going to come into the temple. He's going to do something that is paramount to the abomination that makes desolate. And when he does this thing, which is the abomination that makes desolate, and I, I can think of no other thing that is an abomination that makes desolate other than homosexuality. And something to do with homosexuality which is being forced upon the people of the world today, that abomination that makes desolate, when it is done in the temple of God, the Jewish people are going to flee to the city of the rock, which is possibly Petra. Petra. But there's an interesting thing that this angel says that people don't consider. God is saying when the abomination that makes desolate is done in the temple, you can count the days and the tribulation will be over. 1,290 days to the day. And then he says, blessed are the people that waiteth and coming to the thousand three hundred five and thirty days. 
Blessed are the people that live on this planet that make it to 45 days after the tribulation that have not received the mark. Blessed are the people that live beyond the three and a half years because those people, they are going to be the new people that populate the earth. I, I'm so, I'm disconcerted about the people that think that they're going to come back after the rapture as mayors and doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs on the planet when we're going to rule and reign with Christ. And Christ rules and reigns in the heavens. And, and the prince of the powers of the air have a structure in the heavens. We're going to take over the place that's now inhabited those places of mights and dominions and powers where the powers and principalities and the wickedness, the supernatural wickedness in high places that influence the wicked people on the earth. We're going to take those places. We're going to rule and reign with Christ. And, but there will be a population of people that have not been raptured that have not been changed in a moment in twinkling of an eye, because he says here, blessed are the people that live 45 days after this major battle of Armageddon. And then he says, go thy way till the end, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. I'm going to read to you a verse from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 today. And this message is going to continue next week. This is so potently powerful. Next week, I'm going to share with you about the satellite system that's set up above the earth right now, as foretold in Zechariah chapter 5. I'm going to share with you some supernatural scriptures from the Word of God that deal with in time situations, I'm going to share with you a battle that's getting ready to come up even now. Hello? There's going to be a Gog and Magog battle found in Ezekiel 38 and 39 before the big battle of Armageddon. I'm going to try to make those things plain to you. I was blown away as John Hagee this morning began to talk about these things. But it was just a few weeks ago, a few months ago, that the Lord showed me Daniel chapter 7, where it says the three ribs are in the mouth of the bear, and the bear was told to rise up and devour much flesh, and three ribs were found in his mouth. I'm going to go into that little bit, in a little bit more detail, because that is, has already begun to happen with Ukraine. And you can find two more ribs are going to go right after that goes. And that same verse says that the eagle will have his feathers plucked. We are living in the day that the United States of America's wings are being plucked. Our feathers are being plucked. Our world domination is being plucked. We're no longer the greatest power in the world. We have reduced ourselves. Our leadership has reduced us. And these things are happening even as we speak. And how are we understanding it today? Because the prophecies of the book of Daniel were shut up until the end days, the last days. And God is peeling back the secrets that he shared with Daniel that Daniel couldn't comprehend. Daniel saw it, but could not even write about it. There was no point of reference. He saw it, but he was told, shut up these things. In 2 Peter chapter 3, put it on the screen, verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, scoffers walking after 
their own lusts. Next verse. Saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But you're living in a day that all things have not continued since the beginning of creation. For in the beginning of creation, they rode horses, elephants, camels. They did not ride cars. They did not fly airplanes. From the beginning of creation till today, things are not the same. And they're not the same because you are living in the last of the last days. I believe that people are still scoffing, though, because they're eat up with their atheist, atheism. And they cannot come to grips with the fact that God is God. Amen. Beside him, there is none other. Sister Phillips said it so beautifully when she said, this is the way it is. God said this. God said that. God did this. God, did. And she said, it's, it's a fact. God, God, in the beginning was the word, the Legos, the Logos. And folks, we're living in the days where men are still scoffing. The more intelligent they think they are becoming, the less they believe in the rapture now than before. But here's what, Jesus, here's what the angel said when Jesus ascended. He said, this same Jesus that you saw taken up will come in like manner. Oh, hallelujah. As far out as it seems, as big a stretch as it seems, I'm going to share with you next week in the book of Daniel, the ten toes. That's where we are. The toes made out of clay and iron. And clay and iron doesn't mix. And it's not strong. But the allegiance, the angel said, are ten nations. And those ten nations, five on this foot, Eastern Orthodox, five on the left, Western religion. Five nations that are under the power of the Greek Orthodox Church. They were influenced by Greek Orthodox. I'm going to tell you what nations they are. And Russia is not part of that because Russia is the bear of the north. He's got his own, his own Bible prophecies deal with Russia, but there's going to be five nations. Greece, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, Libya. We're going to go over it next week. You don't want to miss next week. And the five that are under the influence of the Roman Catholic Church, Spain, Gomar, that's Germany. We're going to get into it. Because you're living in the last days. And if these are the last days, God is going to reveal revelation. He's going to show us the meaning of these things. Because it's only shut up till the last days. And somebody needs to say, shut up. Because this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will. I'm getting ready to rejoice. I'm getting ready to leave this world. And the Lord told me very clearly, turn to Mark 13, 27. Mark 3, 13, 27. You're going to see a scripture here that is going to explain a little bit about what's happening. Then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts, part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Next verse. Learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branches is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you'll know that summer is near. Next verse. So you in like manner, when you shall see these things come to pass, know 
that it is near even at the doors. Next verse. Truly I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Next verse. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. His coming is even at the doors. He's standing at the doors. Something awesome, something terrific, something terrible is getting ready to take place on this planet. Jesus is coming soon. And I say to every person listening to this broadcast today, I say to you, get right with God. And like Sister Phillips said earlier, get ready, stay ready, be ready. Like John Bennett said, get ready. You're in the waiting room before the plane takes off. Oh, hallelujah. Don't be stuck over there in the bookstore looking at the Sports Illustrated Edition. Don't be sitting at the bar drinking and sipping something and carousing with a few people hoping that the girl sitting next to you might want you to meet up with her sometime. Put all those things aside. Put aside every weight and every hindrance that would so easily beset us and get ready for the coming of the Lord is at the doors. Pray with me now. Say, dear Heavenly Father, Keep me. Don't let me fail. Don't let me get left behind. Don't let me be doing something I should not be doing when you come again. Help me to stay ready. Help me to prepare myself. Help me, Lord, pay the price to be in the first class section of this great chariot that you send to take us away. In Jesus' name, when the rapture takes place, let us be found doing his will. In Jesus' name. You better make that your prayer every single day. Every day, make this your prayer. Until next week, invite a neighbor to come back. Invite somebody to tune into the telecast. Listen. Next week, I'm going to go into some phenomenal detail. And I think it's going to be a massive change in your life. You'll have an understanding of what's going to happen in the end time like you never had before. Stand with me to your feet. Let's raise our hands to heaven and say, thank you, Lord. We're serving you. You don't have to agree with everything that I believe. You don't have to agree with every understanding of Scripture that I bring out. But one thing you have to do, you have to say, Jesus is my Lord. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead and you shall be saved. Father, thank You. We raise our hands to You, Lord, and we say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. You fulfill Scripture on Palm Sunday, and you're fulfilling Scripture today. Thank you, Lord, for Palm Sunday. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. Amen.